Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with If I Could Only Save, Choose, Enjoy, One Work by Composer X, it would have to be Work Y. Well, the composer is Schoenberg. Oh my, is this opening up a can of worms. First of all, the evil god Cancrazans is going to destroy all of classical music, but for one work per composer, if we don't convince him otherwise, um, does not like atonal music. He really doesn't. And, uh, you know, I mean, I've, I've, I've had this discussion with him. I really have. And I said to him, you know, you're being very provincial for a god. I mean, you know, there's, there's, there's only good music and bad music. And just because you happen not to respond to it, it's obvious that you just haven't spent enough time with it and you haven't heard the great masterpieces in the non-tonal realm. Besides, Schoenberg wrote plenty of tonal music too. So he said, okay, so do that. I said, wait a minute, this isn't up to you. This is up to us. That's the deal. We made the deal and you're not going back on it. And he's like a grump, you know, he's like, well, okay, do what you want to do. So what do you pick from Schoenberg? I mean, you know, there's Gurleader, there's Verklär de Nacht, there's Peleus and Melisande, which sounds like sludge. There's, there's, you know, but there's plenty of tonal stuff if you want it. And I didn't want it. Hell no. You knew what we were going to pick. You suggested the right work. It was obvious to at least some of you. Piero Lunaire, of course, it has to be. Piero Lunaire is one of the greatest marriages of text, psychotic, insane, demented text, and music psychotic, insane, demented music in the history of Western civilization. And my feeling was, you know, if Kankrazans wants to hear a girl leader and the tonal stuff are very clear to knock, well, he can't go ahead and do his, 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 his evil intent and eliminate everything else, can he? Because we're doing Pura Lunaire. But not only does Pura Lunaire have a chance to save the rest of music as we know it, um, it's a good opportunity for that old grump to really sit down, study the words, listen to the music with an open mind. He doesn't have an open mind, but he, he, we're going to work on that. And, and, and come to appreciate what a work of genius Piero Lunaire is. I mean, Piero Lunaire, aside from the fact that it's free atonality, I mean, I don't buy the argument that, you know, you have to pick something that's 12 tone or something. None of that matters. What matters is that it's just a work of completely unexpected, amazing genius, <laughs> completely unique. It's, it's just, it's just, you know, one of those, those landmarks. It's as great a landmark as, for example, the Rite of Spring was. I mean, they all date from around the same time. It's, it's something totally new and fresh and, and valid and powerful in music. And even people, even people who like didn't like Schoenberg, well, nobody liked Schoenberg. He was impossible and obnoxious. But you know, even people who didn't weren't sympathetic to his aesthetics or his polemics or any of the things he was about, they all looked at Piero Lunier and went, "Wow, <laughs> that's something." And you, know, you just you know, if they were honest, if they were honest, if they really thought about it and just said, "Wait a minute," you know, I mean, because. Because it's, 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 oh gosh, I just love it. I really, do. I don't listen to it often. It's not that kind of a work. You know, it's not the kind of thing you play at a cocktail party. Well, it depends on how much everyone's had to drink and, you know, whether you like the people who are at the cocktail party. But, but it, essentially, it's a special, it's a special piece. It's special in its, in its, in its affect, in its expression, and, and, and its impact. But when you're in the mood and you're, there's nothing like it. There's just nothing like it. It's such a, and you come away from it. Let me just say, you come away from it feeling good. No matter how grotesque, you know, the imagery is, it just, it just makes you feel like you've experienced a whole new awakening in sound. There's, there's just nothing like it. I keep saying that, but it keeps being true. It never gets old. Every time you hear Piero Lunier, it's as if you're, you're coming to it for the first time. And, and the impression it makes is one of total freshness and, 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 and 
vitality and vibrancy. Uh, you know, I know it's supposed to be fantasy, ecla, you know, decadence and all that stuff. It's not. It's, I mean, the words are, yes. I mean, the music fits the words in that sense, yes. But, but the style and the, the concept, it's just complete. Uh, I can, words fail me. The music speaks for itself. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to let the music speak to the god Kankrazans and stick it to him. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care. <laughs>